you guys, I just don't know how to say this stuff. <laughs> I uh, I tried to write, I tried to make a video earlier and um, it did not turn out, it was not what God wanted. So here I go again, trying again. Um, let's see, how do I write, how do I say this? Like, God is, has, is doing something really crazy with my life right now. Like for the last video, I talked about how um, he led me to this investing academy um, to make money. And the reason why he did that is because he told me that he wants to speak my husband's lingo. Because for the longest time, I was asking God to change my husband's heart. He's not a believer. He doesn't believe in Jesus. Or if he does believe in Jesus, he's not like committed. He he goes to church with me. Some He used to go to church with me. And then it was all just, you know, to make me happy. And I told God, I don't want him to do this for me. I need, I need him to do it for himself. Like, it's his soul. Like, I, it's not my soul. It's his soul that's going to be suffering, you know? And so I said, God, change his heart. And God told me he was going to change his heart. I had seen a vision where God was pressing on a stone, on his stone heart. And then it started to beat. And God said that, um, I'm going to cleanse his heart through pain. And he said that, um, so when he said that, he was referencing what I'm going through right now, which is, um, my husband, oh, I don't even know how to describe this stuff that's happened in my life. Um, so in August, my husband was sent to Mississippi because he's in the military and his ship is being built over there. And he wasn't supposed to be sent there. This was like a random change in his orders last minute. He was the last person that was sent there. Like even to this day, no one's been sent over there. He was the very last person. And he wasn't supposed to be sent there until this year. And so it was very strange that he was sent there. And God said, that was me. I did that. And then my husband's orders were extended until 2020. And my husband wanted us to move out there to be with him. And so we were preparing to sell the house. We were preparing to, to get renovation quotes and everything so we could get a, sell our house quicker. And then um, within a few days after we get our quotes, God was like, nope, not going to happen. And he changes my husband's orders again to back to back what they were originally, which is um, November or December of this year. And so my husband was like, never mind, you don't have to move out here, There's, it's pointless. And so um, God said, that was me, I did that. I don't want you over there. I don't want you with him. And um, so in December, my husband came home for Christmas on December 12th, and he asked for a divorce. And there was, there was um, some things that were behind that, but Okay, well, I'll, I'll break it down real quick. So um, in November, uh, a person had told me that he had a vision of my husband cheating on me. And um, and God had asked me beforehand, before this happened, he was like, Anna, will you, are you willing to be unconditionally loving to your husband if he cheats on you? And so I said to God, I was like, you know, I think that I could. I think I could forgive him. And I think I could be unconditionally loving towards him. And so God was testing me through this person. And uh, when that person told me this, I was like, well, I already know. I told God that I could forgive him, so I already know what I have to do. And so even if it was true or if it wasn't true, like I already knew what I had to do. But I wanted to test my husband. I wanted to ask him in person to see if it was true. And so I was waiting for him to come home for Christmas and to ask him in person. And during that time frame, which was like a week or so, a, half, a week and a half, um, there was uh, a kind of a distance. Like my husband noticed a distance between us. Even though I was trying to behave normally, I was still like being loving towards him. But when he got home, he said that he had been really depressed and that he just wanted a divorce. And um, and so I told him, well, if the unbeliever does not consent to be with a believer, then to keep the peace, it's okay. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And so um, my husband was like, you're so calm about this. Like, you're not freaking out. I, that, was, that was what I was most worried about was that you would be retaliating against me and take the children and I would never see them. And I was like, no, I would never do that to you. Like, um, I'm just trying to be obedient to the Bible and to what God's telling me to do. And God was telling me it's okay to be separate. And so we were going to have this trial period where we would be separate. Um, and then if things, if we still felt the same, then we would get a divorce. And 
And so, um, for like the next five days, things were very strange between me and my husband. Like we were separate, we were completely separate, but we were very loving towards each other still and, um, affectionate. And then my husband was like, I don't want a divorce. I don't even want a separation. Like, I don't want to be separate from you. And I had to tell him that God told me, come out and be separate. Like I had to tell him that God wants us to be separate and that God had told me, I didn't tell him this part, but I was like, but I knew that God had said to me that he was one doing this. Like he want, he wanted us to be separate. And I didn't understand why, um, but I had a feeling like it had to do with God changing his heart. And so that was why I told him, no, we still have to be separate. And um, this that phrase, come out and be separate, specifically comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I didn't know this. I had to look it up. Um, when I looked up where that phrase came from, it says, do not be, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, and it says, uh, do not be unequally yoked. <laughs> what agreement can exist between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, and as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And so... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it has to do with being unequally yoked, which is what I am. And um, in another Bible, it's it starts with uh, why you have to be wary of idolatry. And so this ties into my last video because God told me he was going to speak my husband's lingo um, just pretty recently, like a couple weeks ago, he said this. And I didn't, I knew that it had to do with money, which is why God brought me to the Investing Academy because my husband, um, that's all he cares about is money. And I don't care about money. I'm, God, it doesn't give me a lot, but it's I know that it's all I need. And so, um, but God told me that he was going to give me money and he was going to use me as a picture for people to see what it's like to be under the umbrella of God and to be an outcast. So he said that Zach chose to be an outcast from God. He chose to, to reject God. And so because he's rejected God, um, he's cut himself off from the blessings. And because I've embraced God and I'm one with God, like I love God so much that he considers me his wife. <laughs> he, he tells me I'm his wife. And, um, and so he said that um, when, when my husband asked for the divorce, he, God told me that I'm going to show you what a real marriage looks like. And he's been very faithful in delivering on that. And so he said that he was going to, um, he was going to, he was going to use me and he was going to use me as a picture of like in the old days when, when the old Testament prophets had to do something crazy as a picture to show the Israelites what a picture of God was like. God told me that this is kind of similar, that he's going to use me as a picture as well. And that, um, what he's going to do in my life is going to be a picture for others to see like, Hey, if you, if you follow Jesus, he's going to bless you and he's going to bless you abundantly. And you're going to want to be under the blessing of God compared to being an outcast and rejecting God. And so, um, that was why God told me he didn't want me to be with my husband anymore. Um, it's really crazy. Look, like, uh, like uh, God told me, I, because I had told God, like, change his heart or free me. And then God recently said to me, um, I'm going to, I'm going to free you. You're free. And I'm going to change his heart. <laughs> and so, um, but he also said that I'm never to take off my ring like, because I'm married to God. Like, I'm married to Jesus. That's what he said. And Jesus was, like, very adamant that I never take off my wedding ring. And he said that, um, he is, oh, what did he say exactly? Hold on. He said what Zach has, he tried to toss his rubies to the ground to be trampled, but I have caught them. And what he has, um, and I will take them and place them as a crowning glory upon another man. And so God said that he's not forever like I'm married to Jesus, like that's what he said to me as I'm married to Jesus, and Jesus is my husband. And he said that um, because God wants to fully inhabit me and another person, he said that that other person, when I look into his eyes, it's going to be like 
I'm seeing the eyes of Jesus. Like it's going to be like I'm looking at Jesus. Like I'm looking at Jesus basically. And so um, I've seen Jesus before in dreams and in visions. And so I know what he looks like or at least how he's appeared to me. And what was really crazy is that I tried to tell this to my my Bible study group from my old church that I was attending. Um, it was my home church for a long time, ever since I really became passionate about God. And I've so slowly been, God has slowly been separating me from that church, and I couldn't understand why. Now I know why. Um, he told me it's full of doubters and naysayers. And he told me this last Thursday before I was going to my Bible study. He said, Anna, this is going to be the last time you go to this Bible study for a while. And I was like, really? Why? Why are you separating me from them? I really like these people. These women are my women. Like these are, this is, I was going to the women's Bible study. And he said, this is the last time because it's full of doubters and naysayers. And he said, you'll see. And so, um, so I went to the Bible study and then at some point, God was like, I want you to tell them about what I'm doing in your marriage. And he was like, he was like, you can tell them they're your friends, right? I was like, yeah, they're my friends. And so um, I tell the group, I'm like, hey, God said I can share this with you guys. Um, I didn't want to share it, but I'm going to share it because you said you're my friends and I can share it with you. And then um, I share what God is doing with me and how he wants to use me as a picture of God's of God's love for his people compared to the people who choose to be outcast. And they're like, God doesn't do that. God would never, God hates divorce. And yes, God does hate divorce. But for you to say that God can't do something, that God's never going to do something like that, like who are you to limit God? Maybe he does want to use me as a picture. How are you, how do you know? And there's been so much confirmation for me. Like I, and I tried to explain the confirmations with them over and over again. And they were just like attacked. I don't want to say they were attacking me, but <laughs> but they were um, very against what I was saying. And so I understand, you know, I, I don't have any hard feelings against them because I understand that it sounds crazy. And, but I also hear God and I hear God very, very clearly. And I am obedient to God and I'm not obedient to man. And I'm not obedient to anybody who thinks that they know the Bible more than, than God. <laughs> okay. So, um, Maybe I am ruining my life, but maybe I'm being faithful to God and maybe I'm being obedient to what God is telling me to do. So before you go condemning somebody for what they they believe God is telling them to do, maybe you should just try and hear from God first and see what he tells you. Maybe that maybe he'll confirm it for you that what I'm doing is the right thing. So what um, one of the Bible verses that God had given me um, that to clarify things for me, was 1 Corinthians chapter 7 again. Like he's, it's, he took me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 where it says, um, Only let each one live the life which the Lord has assigned him to which God has called him. For each person is unique and is accountable for his choices and conduct. Let him walk in this way. This is the rule I make in all the churches. So we all have a mission. We all were given a specific mission in life. And who are you to tell someone what their mission is? You don't know God. You don't know what God's mission is for you. So why are you going to judge that person? And another thing is, um, I believe it was Romans chapter... Hmm. I think it was Romans chapter 9. Oh, here it is. No, it's Romans chapter 14, verse, verse um, 3. It says... Um, let him who eats despise him. let not him who eats despise him who does not eat and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats for God has received him who are you to judge another servant to his own master he stands or falls indeed he will be made to stand for God is able to make him stand so this is just saying you know don't judge another person you don't know what that person is being called to do unless you ask God for confirmation and so God has confirmed it with me many, many times, and I know what God is telling me to do. And so I'm not going to listen to anybody say otherwise. I'm sorry, but and I love you, but I know what God is telling me to do. And I know that he's going to use this for his good and his glory. So I'm not trying to – I don't hate my husband. I love my husband. 
or I, I don't know what to call him anymore, but I, I love Zachary and I, um, I respect him, but I know that God is calling me to do something different. And, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. And now I'm going to stop the video because it's getting kind of long and I'm, there's another video that's coming up. I don't know if I'll do it tonight, but I'm going to have to share it soon because God told me to release everything and this is included. So yeah, um, don't judge me because <laughs> I know it sounds crazy and it's not because I, and I'm not doing this for myself. Trust me because I have a family and, um, and I know that but God has confirmed it so many times through other people that he's going to take care of my children. He's going to take care of me and he's going to take everything. Like everything is in his hands. So I don't need to worry about anything. And I'm for people who are like, oh, but think about your children, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I think about my children. I think about my husband. Like I think about how this is going to affect us. But I also see the long term thing, which is that my husband will be saved. And so will many other people. And that's what really matters. And if I have to sacrifice my life, if I have to sacrifice living in a nice home, if I have to sacrifice um, having my family, having my children, which is what God has told me to do, I have to sacrifice my children, I can't have them. Like, I'm going to do it. I don't care what you guys think. 